So Con of Thrones just ended and I had the time of my life again. There were two major differences this time though. First, it was in Dallas, Texas instead of Nashville, Tennessee. And second, my hair was way longer. <laughs> just kidding, there were many differences, but we'll get into it eventually. Let's start from the beginning. No! <laughs> You're now watching Because Geek. For those of you who don't know, Con of Thrones is a Game of Thrones convention, pretty obvious stuff right there, where you can enjoy a bunch of different panels packed with a bunch of different topics about both the show and the books. You get to see a ton of amazing cosplay, you have the chance to get pictures and autographs from some of the Game of Thrones actors, and you also get to meet some of your favorite Game of Thrones YouTubers, podcasters, bloggers, and all that. Plus, of course, there is always the marketplace, where you can buy all of the Game of Thrones related loot that your little heart desires. This con is always moving around, as I said, last year it was in Nashville, and this year it was in Dallas. And they've already confirmed that the next one will be in a new city, but we'll just have to wait for them to announce which one it will be. Con of Thrones is actually making me visit a bunch of different places that I've never been to in the States. I should probably get one of those scratch map thingies. Yeah. Regarding the guest actors, they usually get the ones with smaller roles, but there's always one major one. Last year it was Ewan Reon who plays Ramsay, and this year it was Joe Dempsey who plays Gendry. Bastards. Bastards everywhere. But this year we also got some cool actresses like Hannah Murray who plays Gilly, Sibel Kekili who plays Shay, and Esme Bianco who plays Ross. We're hoping that next year they can bring even bigger actors because they will be done filming the final season of the show and hopefully they won't be as busy. But yeah, so this year I tried to learn from my mistakes. Last year I arrived right as the con started and left right as the con ended, which left me no time to do anything and it all felt rushed and it wasn't the greatest. So this year I arrived two days early and left two days later, which was way better because other than having time to relax, we were also able to do a bit of touristy stuff, like visiting the Dealey Plaza, which is a bit depressing but it's a must if it's your first time in Dallas. Okay, so seven floors tall, you got it from the sixth floor the window all the way on the right. You see a bunch of arch oh, windows. Oh, there's the fucking there's underpass. There's a grassy knoll. The Shit. grassy knoll is right over there. Yeah. Right. You going over there? Yeah, we'll go over there. Fuck. All right. Like he's sort of the square window is where he was when he okay. made the shot. The one at the very end? Yeah, the one at the right side, second from the top. Uh, this window. And there's two X's on the road to mark exactly where each of the shots happened. Crazy stuff. One thing that I learned from this experience is that uh, even if you bring your own tour guide friend, like we did with Steven, you're still very likely to get stopped by the uh, conspiracy theory tour guides, who are always hunting down tourists around this place, and who will ask you for a tip after you try your best and fail at trying to make them stop talking to you. Y'all gather around. I don't want nobody to miss I, I, Actually, Arthur, I'm going to say, I, we don't have a lot of time. we got to go catch a movie. we got to go get dinner and okay, stuff. Okay, I, so. I still want to show them what a better shot is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love conspiracy theories, okay? And if you do, these guys will tell you stuff that will blow your mind. But just make sure that you bring some cash with you. Unless you're as cold-hearted as the Night King. <laughs> But yeah, other than touristy things, on those first two days we also had time to look around the hotel and the panel rooms to make sure that we learned where everything was so we didn't get lost and arrive late to our panels like it might have happened last year. We also had time to go to the solo movie, yeah, I don't have pictures from that, but here's a picture of the poster. We had time to go on a grocery shopping trip with a hilariously drunken Eddie. Haggard, worn down, face weather, the storms of life. Which helped us get our fridge ready for the whole weekend. And we got to play with puppies! Yay! And then, it was time for the con. Luckily we were able to sleep in that first morning. On Friday I basically only had one panel at 3pm. And I quickly realized that having one panel so late can be worse than having one early in the morning because you're just sitting around the whole time just waiting for this panel to come, building up those nerves for hours. The panel was called The Wars to Come, and it was all about season 8 predictions. I did it with Manu, Sue from Watchers on the Wall, and Sir Hunt. If you guys came to that panel, it wasn't my best and I apologize, I was still warming up for the weekend. Luckily, I had more prediction panels on Saturday, so I was able to make up for it. But before we move on to Saturday, I was also part of the trivia panel on Friday night, which was a ton of fun, especially when I got to read some of the questions while playing a really cool video that Tarzan had asked me to make just for this, and it was just super rewarding to see how much people enjoyed it too. 
I will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out and test your knowledge, but I should warn you that these questions are fucking hard. All throughout the day I met lots of awesome people in person, but I only got pictures with a few of them because I kept forgetting to take out my camera. Damn it! But yeah, I got pictures with Luca from Watchers on the Wall, the awesome Shire Post team who were playing my video at their booth, that was so cool. If you haven't watched that video, it's popping up in the corner right now. Huge shout out to them. And then one of the coolest things too was finding out that King McKay had come to the con. That's him right there! Yeah! Game of Thrones YouTuber OG, man! I was watching his videos before I even started my own channel. And no, I am not 4'10", I am 5'4", I was just leaning back, okay? And the other super cool thing that happened on Friday was receiving this awesome gift from Doc Holiday. He had been talking about designing a Proto Geek t-shirt for me for months and it's finally done and it turned out so good! Just look at it, it's like a little caveman with glasses and my signature hat on, Proto Geek, yeah! He also got me my actual t-shirt size, which is extra small. Yeah, I wear extra small. Yeah, I know, I'm tiny as hell. I managed to stay pretty damn sober for the first two nights because, you know, I had 10 a.m. panels to show up to and I'm a responsible adult and all that. My first 10 a.m. panel on Saturday was about Littlefinger, who, as many of you already know, is my favorite character. And of course, I really enjoyed the panel, plus the research that I had to do beforehand on what it's like to be a psychopath. I did that one with Oz from Watchers on the Wall and also Jocelyn, who I had actually met last year because we also had a panel together last year. She's like my panel buddy now. <laughs> At the end of that panel, I met the awesome Linda, who showed me a lot of support, and I am super grateful for that. And we actually kept running into each other at the bathroom, which was hilarious. But yeah, an hour later was the After the Wall panel, where Phil, Tony, Patrick and I discussed things like where the Night King would go, how he would get defeated, what would happen after everything is done, and stuff like that. Then, another hour later, we had our YouTube meet and greet, which was supposed to be just us standing around in a room talking to people, but Tony and Mark ended up turning it into an actual panel, putting all of us up on stage, and as you can see, there were many, many of us up on that table. But it turned out alright. It was a lot of fun doing it that way. We all told our stories, and people asked us questions, and it was great. And then I met another one of my patrons, Cole Vikings, who brought his really sweet daughter with her really cool hair, I also got a picture with Ellen Bell and Elodia, who had really cool hair too. And damn it, Quinn, I didn't get a picture with you, but I was really happy to meet you in person as well. The last panel of the day was the one that I enjoyed the most, and it was called The Deadpool. I did it with Tony again, who made every panel super fun, and Steven Stark, awesome guy too. And we basically just went through the whole list of characters left in season 8, and decided if they were going to die or not, while also letting the audience give us their opinions too. It was really fun to see how divided they were sometimes. Now, at the end of this one, I did manage to remember my camera, and I got pictures of Rebecca, Abraham, who's always sending super chats, and Jen, who was super nice and gave me this huge bag of goodies, oh my god. That night, we finally played Game of Thrones themed Quiplash, which you may remember me talking about in my 2017 Con of Thrones vlog, I was very excited about it. You can see some of my answers on screen. And at one point during the event, Graham and I put our heads together to go full savage when we got asked the question of what is buried in the Winterfell crypt and what did we say? Um, this. This is what we said right here. <laughs> but yeah, Quiplash was awesome, so thank you so much to Ashea for setting that up and anyone else who helped. But then the night wasn't even done there. We also had Simon and Pedro, the uh, talented guys who run Blaze Manga, come over to the house. And I can't believe I don't have any videos or pictures of this. Like, come on! <laughs> this is one of the things I didn't learn from last year. But yeah, we just played pool, we played darts, we played skee-ball. And then I dominated at Exploding Kittens. Yeah, guys, I actually have a winning streak, so, you know, anyone want to challenge me at Exploding Kittens? I'm here, I'm ready. Come at me, bruh. All right, well, after that was Sunday morning and we had another 10 a.m. panel about Ned Stark, which was submitted by Steven Stark, that's his real last name, and he invited me and Tarzan to be part of the panel with him. He made a really good argument for Ned not being as honorable as everyone says he is. I kept hyping up the panel before it happened, like, I was just telling everyone, like, you will never see Ned Stark the same way again. Trust me, just come. And again, if you guys are interested, all links are in the description. But yeah, let me just say that for many of these panels, I wish that we had more than 50 minutes to talk about them, because time would run out and we'd still have so much to say. But, you know, I understand that they have to keep them short, but yeah, that's a thing that happens often. After the Ned Stark panel, I had a panel about chivalry in the Age of Thrones, with some more awesome people like Jim, Joanna and Patrick. 
I had a lot of fun on that panel, so thank you guys for uh, being awesome panel guests. Uh, for being awesome panel buddies. <laughs> I don't know what you call pa pa panel partners, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for being such awesome panel partners. We discussed what it's like to be a knight in Game of Thrones and in real life, where the word comes from, all the things they represent, and which characters we thought were the best knights and non-knight knights. Yeah, that, that's a thing. Non-knight knights. And finally, the time came for my most nerve-wracking panel. YouTube Live on the main stage. I was up there with Phil, Tony, Mark, and Steve Love, who did me the favor of taking over the task of asking questions, because you know, he's way better at that than me, and I didn't really want to do it, so thank you, Steve. And he was able to also show off some of his Game of Thrones character voice impressions, which were hilarious, as usual. Give you a taste of something. You guys want to hear Jorah Mormont? I've never seen so many Khaleesi's in one place. <laughs> I can barely contain my excitement. I have a bear, I have a boner the size of Bear Island. <laughs> and then I was done! Best feeling in the world, guys. Best feeling in the world. We went to the closing ceremony, and then it was time for Steven Stark's barbecue, which we used as the perfect event to give James a surprise birthday party. Apparently he had heard from someone that we were celebrating his birthday at this barbecue, but he had no idea that we all had planned to wear tie-dye shirts and have him arrive late so he could see all the sea of tie-dye shirts as he was approaching. Thank you so much, Carol, for keeping him busy at the con. We also wrote a bunch of happy birthday messages messages and a tie-dye shirt for him and gave him a bunch of presents. It made us all really happy to see him so happy. And then we ate and drank and partied and yeah, it was a really, really cool night. But yeah, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Um, overall, it was an awesome weekend. Uh, the next two days, we just basically relaxed and did nothing. We found the pool at night. But yeah, sadly this year, I don't have any Game of Thrones actor encounter stories. But I did go to many of their interviews. I went to see Sibel Kakili. I went to see Cyril Farrell, interviewed by History of Westeros, which was one of the best. And I went to see Gendry, who said a really cool detail that I could use in my sleuthing videos about him making himself a new weapon in Season 8. Overall, it was an awesome weekend just like last year and I can't wait for next year so I want to give a huge thank you to Watchers on the Wall to the mischief management team to everyone I had panels with to everyone who came to the panels to everyone who said hi to me after the panels or when you found me walking around to everyone who hung out with me thank you to everyone who helped me get there like my awesome patrons freaking June used his aeroplane points again to get me my tickets Eddie for helping out with the house my fiance Graham for recording everything and being there for emotional support thank you to everyone who gave me presents and yeah guys just remember that all the panels will be linked in the description and don't forget that I'm still working on my sleuthing series if you wanted to watch the two videos that I have already up for that you can click here and if you wanted to watch animations you can click here Winds of Winter chapter recaps and other stuff thank you so much for watching leave a like if you liked it subscribe for more click on the bell so you don't miss my new videos because YouTube and I will see you in the next one like basically